Radioactive decay is a random phenomena. What that means is that the decay of one individual nucleus can't be predicted. It happens entirely at random, just like the shake of a dice. In this box, I've got 80 dice, and I'm going to use these dice to represent the nuclei of unstable atoms. Now, what I'll do is I'll shake the dice, and then after I've shaken it, I'm going to remove any number sixes. The sixes will represent nuclei that have decayed. So I'll take those to the side, and then I'll count how many dice I've got remaining. And I'll repeat the process, shaking the remaining dice, removing the sixes once again, and I'll record all of my results in this table on the board as I go along. Right, let's go for the first throw. Now this is going to take a little while. Let's pick out those sixes. Throw number two. Number three. Number four. Throw five. Six. Seven. Eight. Throw nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. The next step is to plot a graph, but I'll leave that one up to you. A few things you'll notice though. First of all, the number of dice remaining dropped off very quickly at the beginning, but as time went on, the rate at which it dropped off steadily decreased. And even after 12 throws, we still had quite a few dice remaining. In fact, actually, it could take a very long number of throws so that all of the dice eventually are removed from my stack. The reason for this is that there's always a tiny probability, no matter how many times you throw a dice, that that dice might never come up with a six on the top. And the same thing's true for radioactive decay. Even after a long, long time, 
you will have some nuclei that haven't decayed because there will always be a chance, a small probability, that a few of them will not have decayed. And as a result of that, when a substance decays, although the activity of that substance drops off very quickly to begin with, even after a long period of time, you will still have some of that material remaining. 